All right, it's Saturday. So that means it's dino day. Ha ha ha. I posted a couple of shorts testing the draggy last night at Kentucky Dragway on a high 13 second car and a mid to high 12 second car. And uh, it's pretty accurate. I think the ET on the eighth mile and the quarter mile was within 0.02, two hundredths. And the mile prior on the eighth mile and quarter was never off more than 0.7 of a mile per hour it seemed where it uh read the worst was on the 60 foot especially on the faster car on the high 13 second car um it was 0.03 off and then on the uh 12 second car it was 0.06 off but uh really happy with that and and how good those things were but uh if y'all want to check that out it's on the shorts so question is how much is the uh camaro going to put down the online calculators um which have been really good for me in the past said uh 630 to 640 having run that 9.9 9, at 132 but um yeah the um when i had an lt1 in it this car put down 620 on James Short's dyno, and his is a Dino Dynamics, and it's a very, very low reading dyno. But the car never ran faster than a 10.2, 10.3. And the reason for that is because it would spin really bad because I didn't have the suspension I got in it that I have now. The suspension hooks good now. The LT1 with the 200 shot. With that 620 rear wheel horsepower on the Dino Dynamics, low reading Dino definitely would have ran nines if I had the suspension that I have in the car now. But um, like I said, based on trap and mile prior, those online calculators have it at 630, 640. And uh, the Dino we're going to, it is a Mustang Dino, but it does read a little bit lower than some of the Mustang Dinos I've seen. This car right here, on his dyno, which the DA has a lot to do with it too, but uh, I've, it was a really good DA, D, a DA day when we went to the DK Goodrich dyno. His seems to read closer to those online calculators based on weight and mile per hour. But um, this one, based on weight and mile per hour, but running on motor and what it dynoed on motor, it seemed to have read 20 to 30 low. So with that being said, probably going to put down about 600 on that dyno but um the main thing i want to take it to the dyno is because my scanner ever since that if y'all watch the other videos ever since that ground wire which never even touched the alternator power stud it was just over the windings i guess it was just getting electricity from those windings but ever since then my my wideband has not read correctly through the scanner and it's hard to tune it like that and I have a bad habit of not looking at the white band while I'm going down the track. So that's the reason why I want to get it dyno, get it cleaned up. Plus, wide open throttle is easy to tune. My goal was to tune it myself to a nine. I did that, so that, that goal's done. But um, tuning wide open throttle, timing, and air fuel ratio, that's a lot easier than it is to tune on HB tuners with stock ECM. That's a lot easier to tune than the cruise and the idle and when it goes from cruise back to idle. So, and I think I got that all pretty good. The only one issue is it doesn't start as good as it should. It doesn't start, you crank it a little, it won't start. And then you crank it again, it starts right up. But uh, maybe it just needs more fuel. But now we do have a trailer and we should probably take it. But I'm lazy and I don't feel like loading it up and strapping it down. Plus. Where his dyno's at, it's hard to get cars in and out of there. He keeps so many cars there, and it's just hard to get your car in and out of there, let alone a trailer. So we're just going to drive it. It's a, uh, it's pretty much full on gas. Um, it's about a 30-minute drive, or a 30-mile drive, which takes about 45 minutes because it's mostly back roads. You can get on the highway a little bit, but... Most of the time you're on back roads, but it uh, took us uh, two five gallons, 485, my little siphon hose. It works like magic. 
But uh, we'll see y'all at Warlock Dino and Tuning Services. Woo -woo. And again, Warlock Dino Tuning Services, they are on Facebook. I'll post that right here. But if you're ever in the Richmond, Kentucky area, he's just in Waco, just outside of Richmond. Want a dino tune? Hit him up on Facebook. All right, off we go. Appointments at 2 o'clock. Well, here we are. Didn't take as long as I expected. But like I said, you can't hardly get a trailer down here. There's a spot up there you can park a trailer. But uh, it's hard to even turn a car to run around down here. He's got some nice vehicles. Alright, for you guys new to the channel, this car has been at this dyno before. We did it on motor. The DA was like 4,000. And it put down 300 real world horsepower on motor. And from my experience, a thousand DA is about 10 horsepower. So it's more around 340, but uh, the DA is about 2,500 today, and um, it's on turbo. And uh, again, for y'all new to the channel, it's a 5.3. It's a Gen 3, Gen 3 rods and all. It's an early, early Gen 3. And it's got the BTR Stage 2 cam, LS1 intake. Uh, it's a budget build. That's the brand, GT45 Turbo. I'd post the link, but they took the website down. They've either changed names or went out of business. BTR stage 2 cam LS1 intake and um, that's pretty much it I went back through the motor and put uh, bearings in it and uh, home the cylinders and put new rings in it and gap them but uh, we'll see what it does all right we're gonna see where it's at on seven eight pounds of boost Six seven pounds made four forty five, mm -hmm. four sixty seven, seven. four. Yeah. So it uh, went to seven pounds that time. Went to four fifty seven. So we're going to turn her up. See what it does. So oh, this one's probably going to be 9, 10 pounds of boost. Blowing stuff off the walls.
ever since we turned it up, we're having a hard time with the match center sensor reading correctly on the scanner, but it's acting like it's adding fuel like it's supposed to. <coughs> we're gonna see if my computer will read it right. So guys, I should have known better than use them tires. I don't know what else I could have used, that's all I got, but we've had problems with them tires spinning before. As you can see, they're spinning again. And it actually went up to 16. 16 pounds, Billy? Yeah, 16.2. 16.2 pounds. And I don't even have the boost controller unhooked unless it unless it came unhooked somewhere, which is quite possible. Because usually, usually it don't go that high unless I unhook one of them lines off the boost controller. So I think one of my lines just popped off somewhere, got a hole burn in it, one or two. That's crazy. But uh, we can't get a good number because it keeps spinning. <laughs> We've had them tires spin before. But I think it's making well over 600 well yeah, over 600 i didn't think it'd go up to 16 pounds but it went and up and to 16 goes, i mean instant, and it, instantly 16 it went to 16 pounds and it stayed there maybe unhook one of them lines and see what it does Maybe that turbo's bigger than I thought it was, but I mean, they took their website down. I did find it on the website and it said GT, they took GT45, it said 69 millimeter, 300 bucks. I, I bought it used, but I, when I first got it, I found it on their website, but they since took their website down. They've either changed names or went out of business. I don't know. I don't know. Billy's thinking it's probably making around 700 around there with them tires. You can tell them tires are spinning because you put your, they're so hot you can't leave your hand on them. That's how hot they are from spinning. And we had that problem before with those same tires, but that is what it is, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's shot rubber everywhere, so we're gonna give up on it because the tires just spin too much on that 15, 16 pounds. I screwed that boost controller out further than I did at the track, but I didn't expect it to go that high. But uh, estimate, Billy, what do you think it, it made? 715 is right around there. Yeah, so it's making more boost than I thought. It's actually making more power than I thought. So, but um, fortunately, those tires ain't going to let us do nothing. I mean, I can't even see all the rubber here. All that and you can't even leave your hand on there for very long it actually burn you oh well so at the track when it ran the 10-4 I had it turned out 20 turns I actually had it turned out 30 there so maybe that manual boost controller works better than I thought it does I just had to screw it more but when you screw it that far out there's no more clicks but yeah it went from seven to 16 with that manual boost controller so i think that's all the boost it's going to make even if we unhooked it but i just was supposed to, i should have just uh unscrewed the manual boost controller more at, at 20 clicks i thought it just quit adding but if you go more it adds more so it works better than i thought it did but yeah i'm pretty sure that's max boost on it and i'm gonna say it's making <laughs> six to seven hundred too bad we couldn't get no good numbers, but tires, 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 tire dust. Those 
Those tires are five years old. They've been used much, but they are five years old and been sitting in the weather. Not sitting out in the weather, but been sitting inside in the cold and heat. couple hours fortunately uh, I knew those tires I kind of knew those tires was going to do that because I've had I've used these tires on that dyno before and it uh it spun but uh we do know it made 457 horsepower on seven pounds of boost and that was only like 6200 rpm um I think it would have went higher had we revved it more. But uh, let's go inside and do some mathematics and see. I'm even the dyno tuner, Billy, uh, William Mead, uh, Mordock Dyno Tuning Services, he, he even guessed it was probably making around 700. So I didn't think it would go up to 16 pounds of boost, and it did. Especially with the boost controller, I didn't think it would go up to 17 pounds of boost, but it did. Oh, and also he did get it to start better and cruise better. It, it wanted to surge at certain RPM, so it's still there a little, but it ain't near as bad as it was. And the car was fat as could be. <laughs> it wide open throttle, so we did lean it out some, but uh, whether to pick up power or not in a quarter mile, I don't know. We'll have to see though. Let's do some uh, mathematics here. So. The car's been on that dyno before, and on motor, it made it made 300, but the DA was like 4,000. If we put 310 in here and 7 pounds of boost, which we know from the video that the car made 457 horsepower, it actually, I think it was 6,200 RPM, but, um, and it probably would have made more if he'd have spun it a little bit more. I think he was afraid of that stock bottom engine 3, but, uh, anyway... That gives us 457.66. Now let's put um, 310 back in here, and then we'll put 16 pounds of boost. 647. I think that's what it would have made, no doubt about it. The calculations that he had done per the 20 horsepower per one pound of boost or something, he got a, his calculations came up with a little, little over a 705, but. Again, we only spun it on that seven pound boost to 6,200 RPM. If we just spun it up to like 68, 69, that probably would have went up. So it's definitely making at least 650 like I had assumed it would. And um, based on this right here, so I've weighed this car before. Now, this was with a full tank of gas and when I ran that uh, 992, Where'd it go? When I ran this pass, the 992 at 132, it had a full tank of gas. Now, um, I did take the HVAC out since then, but then I added that turbo, so I'm still going to say it's 3550. Actually, the car weighed 3600 with the nitrous model and my laptop in the car, and when I took those out and made a couple of passes, then it was 3550. But anyway, that's about what the car weighs. So... It, it guesstimates based on that time, that that mile per hour that it's at 641. So this says 647, and that's usually what you want to go by is the mile per hour. But the ET had it at 7.7. .7. But that suspension is working good, so um, I'd say this is a closer number. And this um, this has it right at about the same thing. So I'm shocked that that little turbo went that high. All right, so as y'all saw in the video, for some reason the map sensor didn't want to read right on his scanner, so we switched over to my computer. So I have the last pull that the car made here, which I'm sure he'll send me the rest of them. But anyway, this thing rolls into boost almost instantly. Look at this. The boost is down here. You can also see the map sensor here and the map sensor here. But, I mean, watch, as soon as he hits... 100% throttle position sensor, 
Watch how fast the boost goes up. We'll do it in real time. Real time. Boom, 16. I mean, just that fast. And look how fast it wrapped the RPM, even with the load on the dyno. 6,800 RPM. But um, it went, and then it kind of tapered back down to to 15. But it hit 16, then tapered down to 15. 1607. And tapered down to 15 before he let off of it at 6,800. But this thing rolls into boost quick. And um, my wide band don't read right on the scanner. Let's see. But um, you can see where it reached the uh, 205 kPa. Uh, intake air temperature was all in check. And yeah, everything did good. Really impressed with this car. But uh yeah, um I wish the tires would have stuck cuz I'm 100% sure this thing would have been right at 650 horsepower, maybe even more. Um based on what um the dyno tuner saw, he said that it possibly could have even hit 700. But them tires, they're we looked at the date on them. They're 5 years old and they've been out of the weather per se you know, the rain and the snow, but they have been in that carport for five years just sitting there in the heat and cold. So they just they just didn't want to hold traction on that dyno. I guess the next time I go, maybe I'll try the radials. I, I heard that uh, the little cleats in the dyno will destroy your radials, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What tires should I use? And what do you think it actually put down at 16 pounds of boost? But uh, I guess I'll conclude that video, and uh, y'all have a great day. Like and subscribe, please.